Hi, thanks for watching the previous video about building a private cloud from old hard drives. Many of you feel worried about your data if the hard drive fails. In this video I will build a private storage cloud with a backup plan when the hard drive fails. If the hard drive fails you will not lose any data, you just need to replace it with another hard drive. Your data will be restored. Let's get started. I prepared four hard drives, one solid state drive and three traditional hard drives. Solid state drive is used to install the operating system, it makes the system run fast, it has a capacity of 60 gigabytes. A 1 terabyte hard drive is called parity, it helps you recover data when one of the other hard drives fails. A single parity hard drive can spare up to six other hard drives. The parity hard drive must have a capacity greater than or equal to the maximum capacity of the remaining hard drives. The remaining hard cells are used to store data. In this video there are only two hard drives to store data, which is a 1 terabyte hard drive and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. These two hard drives will be merged into one. After adding all the drives to the computer I created the OS installer. The operating system used in this video is Ubuntu Server. I have an 8 GB USB stick to create Ubuntu Server Installer. So that you don't have to wait long, I have pre-downloaded the Ubuntu Server ISO file. With USB stick and ISO file I use Rufus tool to create OS Installer. Rufus will destroy the data on your USB stick so you should back up your data. It takes about 5 minutes to complete the Ubuntu server installation. You should safely remove the USB stick from the computer. Next you plug the installation USB stick into the target computer and start installing the Ubuntu server operating system. To install the operating system, you need to set up the computer to boot from the USB stick. I am using Asus mainboard and the way to access the BIOS is to press the delete key repeatedly when turning on the computer. Next go to setting boot order and select the newly created installation USB stick. Scan disk cruiser blade. Save your changes and restart your computer. Your computer will boot from the installation USB stick. You choose the language, the keyboard is right for you, I use English. Setting up a static app address for the server is a must, as it will come in handy in the next steps. Edit IPv4. Manual. Depending on the IP address range you are using, set it up accordingly. I set my server IP address to 10.11.32.29. Next is setting up the hard drive. Unlike the previous video, this step you only choose the hard drive to install the operating system. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, we will install the operating system on a solid state drive. So please select the correct hard drive before going to the next step. This is an overview of your hard drives, you will form it and partition the remaining hard drives in the next step. Next you will be asked to create an admin account, set the server name. To access from another computer to this server, you enable OpenSSH server. The preparation steps are done, the computer will start to be installed. You wait until you are prompted to restart your computer. Now you can remove the installation USB stick and press enter to continue. Because you already have the operating system installed, the computer should be set up to boot from a 60 GB solid state drive.
save the changes and start the computer. Wait a few more minutes for the boot to complete and you use the admin account to log in. Check the IP address of the server with the command hostname strike through I. The IP address is 10.11.32.29, the same as I set up in the previous step. From another laptop I access the server using SSH. You open the command window of the Windows operating system and use the following command. SSH username at your IP address. SSH net at 10.11.32.229. Next, enter the admin password when prompted. In this part, we will create an array of hard drives to merge the hard drives into one. You can merge hard drives of different capacities into one. Before merging the hard drives you update and upgrade your server. To merge multiple hard drives of different capacities into one I use MergerFS. sudo apt install MergerFS fuse. Let's review our four hard drives with the command lsblk. The SD hard drive is used to install the operating system. The remaining three hard drives are SDB, SDC and SDD. Since the hard drives are not partitioned yet, I will create a new partition for the drives. I will create a partition for the SDB drive. For each drive you only create a single partition for the entire drive. I have created the partition for the SDB drive. To create a partition for the drive, use the command sudo disk slash dev slash sdx. You replace sdx with the drives you want to partition. OK to create a new or empty partition table. N key to create new partition. P key to validate the partition you just created. W key to save the changes. You repeat with all three traditional hard drives, two 1 terabyte hard drives and one 500 gigabytes hard drive. So I have three partitions for traditional hard drives. SDB1, SDC1, and SDD1. You do not do this step with a solid state drive. Next, I create an X4 file system for the newly created partitions with the command sudo mkfs.x4 slash dev slash sdx1. You replace sdx1 with sdb1, sdc1, and sdd1. This step you do not do with the hard drive running the operating system. You repeat the steps with all three partitions of three traditional hard drives. So I have created three partitions and created X4 for partitions. Next you create new folders to mount traditional hard drives. Disk 1 and Disk 2 folders are for the remaining two traditional hard drives to store data. Parity folder for one terabyte hard drive. This hard drive will protect your data in case of hard drive failure. A 1 terabyte hard drive is called parity, it helps you recover data when one of the other hard drives fails. If you have multiple hard drives, create more folders like disk 3, disk 4. To mount the hard drives you need to know the identifiers of the partitions you created in the previous step. You use the command ls strike through l slash dev slash disk slash by strike through id. You notice the lines I marked are the identifiers corresponding to the partitions. Different partitions have different identifiers. Prepare lines of text with identifiers, directories, x4. I use SDB hard drive as parity hard drive. The SDC and SDD hard drives are data storage drives mounted to the disk 1 and disk 2 directories. You copy and paste the partition identifiers that correspond to the folders. If you have more hard drives that store data, you create more lines and more folders. 
Please note that the Parity hard drive must have the largest capacity. At least the Parity hard drive must have a capacity equal to the largest hard drive in the array of hard drives that store data. With one hard drive Parity can recover data for six other hard drives. Each line is structured as slash dev slash disk slash by strike through wide slash hard disk i directory path x for default 00. Once you're ready, copy and paste it into the fstab file. You use the command sudo nano slash etc slash fstab to edit the file. The last line merge fs will help you to merge single hard disks into one. This step you pay attention to determine the correct purpose of each hard disk and most importantly the hard disk for parity. You save the changes with the CTRLX key combination, then press the Y key. For the mounts to be applied you use the command sudo mount strike through a. Check the mount using the LSBLK command. As you can see, the hard disks are mounted with folders. Check merge of single hard disks with DH strike through F command. 1 terabyte hard drive and 500 gigabytes hard drive merged into 1.4 terabytes by mergers. So I have merged the single hard drives and determined the hard drive parity. Next I will install Nextcloud to build a private cloud server. The install command is sudo snap install next cloud. If you forgot the server IP address use the command hostname strike through I. Then you open any browser, enter the server IP address and start creating your own cloud storage. You create a new admin account and write down to access it in the following steps. Username is nat, password is an undisclosed secret. Skip installing apps because that's not the purpose of this video. Check cloud storage after installing Nextcloud. Setting system. Cloud space is only 17 gigabytes, very little compared to the number of four hard drives we have. Because we haven't used traditional hard drives for cloud storage yet. I try to upload some files to check if the cloud is working. The purpose of the next step is to change the directory of the cloud data to slash mnt slash storage. I successfully uploaded two files and we are good to go. The folder has a storage capacity of 1.4 terabytes that we created in the previous step. You use the command sudo snap connect next cloud, removable media to allow next cloud to connect to external storage. To move data to another folder, Stop next cloud with the command sudo snap stop next cloud. Next you change the data path for next cloud by editing the configuration file. sudo nano slash var slash snap slash next cloud slash current slash next cloud slash config slash config dot php. You find the data directory line and edit. Data directory slash mnt slash storage slash data. You should configure trust domain here. With a trust domain configuration that will allow you to access your cloud hosting from outside the internet. You replace the IP address with the star character. You save the changes with the CTRLX key combination, then press the Y key. Next you move the data from the old folder to the new folder. sudo mv slash var slash snap slash next cloud slash common slash next cloud slash data mnt storage. After migrating data you start next cloud. 
I hope cloud storage will change. You reopen the next cloud management page. Check storage capacity. Setting system. Awesome, capacity is 1.3 terabytes. Wish my computer could add more hard drives. But we have not configured data backup when the hard drive fails. We have not configured the hard drive parity. This part we will use the fourth hard drive, hard drive parity. First you install SnapRaid with the command sudo apt install SnapRaid. After installing SnapRaid you create a new config file. sudo nano slash etc slash snapraid.conf You copy and paste the sample configuration file. You then edit the file to match the number of hard drives you have. For my case we'll configure as follows. I only have one parity hard drive so I will remove one and change the path. The sample file has three data drives, I will remove one and change the folder name disk3 to disk2. Please double check before saving your changes. I use a parity hard drive, two hard drives to store data are disk1 and disk2. Next, use the command sudo snapraid sync to start backing up your data. If your data is large, this process will take several hours. Everything okay? That's a successful sync. This command is very interesting. I will sync one more time. Because the data doesn't change, it's faster. But you're syncing manually and shouldn't be. So you schedule automatic sync. You create a new folder snapraid runner with the command sudo mkdirop snapraid runner. You go to the snapraid runner folder. Next you download the file snapraidrunner.py. Next you download the file snapraidrunner.j2. After you have two files snapraidrunner.py snapraidrunner.j2 you schedule automatic sync. You use crontab strike through e to schedule snapraid sync. You use nano editor because it's easy to use. You copy and paste the text as above. It will help you to automatically sync your data daily at 3.30 a.m. You save your changes and close the file. That way your data will automatically be synced and recoverable when a hard drive fails. Next I will configure to allow access to the private cloud from the internet. You enable HTTPS for Nextcloud with the command sudo nextcloud enable HTTPS self-signed. With HTTPS your data is encrypted when transmitted over the internet environment. After successfully enabling HTTPS you forward the port on the router. On the router you forward port 443. In this case, I forwarded port 443 to IP address 10.11.32.229. If you have not configured trust domain, you cannot access Nextcloud from outside the internet. When I changed Nextcloud's data storage directory, I configured trust domain. Because I am using dynamic public app address so I will configure dynamic domain name. The free dynamic domain name service I use is DuckDNS.
How to configure DocDNS I have shown you many times in previous videos. But I still want to show in this video because I want to build a complete cloud server. You create a new file doc.sh. Then copy the file containing your token. The text is available on docdns.org. You edit the path and keep only doc.log. Next command sudochmod 700 duck.sh. Next you schedule automatic public app address update. Here you are having automatic data sync schedule. You will add an automatic public app address update schedule. You edit the path to keep only duck.sh. Next you try to update the public app address with the command sudo dot slash duck dot sh. If the log file is ok then you are successful. So my private cloud server has a domain name and is accessible from outside the internet. In this video I showed you how to build a private cloud storage server. Your data is protected with hard drive parity. If one of the hard drives is damaged, how to replace it? How do you recover data when the hard drive fails? If you want to know please comment I will do it in the next video. Thanks for watching, help me reach 500 subscribers.